Hello, my name is Joseph Ayali. I'm a member of the Coherence Development Team. And I'm here to talk today about a new uh, functionality added to Coherence, uh, Topics API, added in 14.1.1. In this video, we will highlight the functionality provided by the out-of-the-box messaging functionality added by Coherence Topics API. We will review, publish, subscribe, and message queue processing. We will highlight the Coherence Topic API. And finally, we will interactively look at source code and run a Hello World demo using the Topics API. Note that this video is intended as an introduction. There are more detailed explorations of the topic that we will highlight at the end. Uh, main functionalities added by the Topics API. It provides publish subscribe messaging. It provides message queue processing that enables scaling, scaling by parallel processing. All of this messaging is built on top of coherent, scalable, and fault tolerant platform. There's configurable quality of service for the topics. There's uh, grid side content filtering and transformations to to uh, minimize network transmissions between the data grid and the subscribers. And lastly, there's an ability to configure a max storage size for unconsumed values on the topic. And if this is configured, the, the uh, by default, publisher flow control will throttle publisher when, when the, the subscribers fall behind consuming the values. So it'll make the footprint smaller, but it'll, it'll throttle the, the, the senders until the subscribers catch up. Broadcasting with publish subscribe messaging. So within the coherent storage tier, there's a named topic and it's configurable by configuration file. So first, for publish subscribe, you do uh, you register one or more subscribers to the topic. They are anonymous subscribers, and then there's one or more publishers. This example only shows one publisher that sends values to the topic. So the topic is the shared shared mechanism that the, the publisher client and the subscriber clients can communicate with. The publisher in this example is sending a string A to the name topic. The topic will save the values until the subscriber is explicitly requests to receive the values. And all the messages are delivered to all anonymous subscribers. Just showing the next message. Now, for queue processing, uses using subscriber groups. So, in in this this messaging model, we still have a name topic, but there's a subscriber group uh, that that's defined on on the topic. And so this this works in the following way. When a subscriber creates itself and says that it's a, a group member of of the same of foo, then they all consume from the same subscriber group. And, and for this case, for each message delivered to the subscriber group, only one subscriber group member processes it and allows parallel consumption of the values. So for this example, we, we only have one publisher, it could be multiple publishers. Our publisher sends string A to the name topic. The data grid sees that it has a subscriber group and it puts the puts the value into the subscriber group. Same for the second for the so we have A and B and now to show that we can consume in, in parallel that each one of them will receive one of the messages, unlike the broadcast model, not all messages go to all subscriber group members. The uh, interface is added to coherence to enable messaging. So the top level entry level is name topic. Uh, notice it's auto closable and that it uh, has factory methods to create publishers and subscribers. And there's options that we'll go into more detail on another slide. And there's also management methods 
to manage subscriber groups because the lifespan of a subscriber group is longer than any subscriber group member. So you need to know which subscriber groups are active on a topic and you can actively reset it by destroying the subscriber group. Uh, the publisher has an asynchronous send that returns a completable future. So if you want to send a value and you want to wait for it to complete, you would do a send with a, a dot join. Uh, the flush method is so if there's any number of outstanding asynchronous sends that you do a flush dot join and it will wait for all outstanding asynchronous sends to complete either normally or exceptionally. Uh, the creation options we'll look at here are just, uh, there's many different flavors of preserving order from not preserving order at all with order by none to the default of order by thread. So all this means is when the publisher on a, on a thread sends met values one, two, three, that they're stored sequentially in the data grid so that they have the possibility of being consumed in the order they were published in. Uh, the subscriber API provides one method to asynchronously receive a completable future that returns back a element wrapper that contains the value that was published by the by a uh, publisher. Uh, key subscriber create option is the name of. So if you create a subscriber with the name of option, that's specifying it's a subscriber group member and which subscriber group it's joining. Uh, additionally, there's a filtered by and convert using. Those are the uh, subscriber options that are, enable one to be able to limit transmission and, and only receive the data that the subscriber is interested in working on. Note that there's only one filtered by and one convert using per subscriber group. So if, if subscriber group members are adding them, they, they must all agree on what they're adding. Complete on empty, if it's enabled, that means usually when subscriber receive is, is an asynchronous operation, if you, you do a get, it will block waiting to receive that value. If you create the subscriber with complete on empty enabled, then it will return a null element. And that, that's why we have the element wrapper. Okay, now we're on to the hands-on source code demo. So just we're gonna this demo in, in the data grid is already started in IntelliJ and I'll be showing that in a second. Uh, both the subscriber and publisher will be working with a common topic called example topic. We're using the default cache config. And so in the example we will be starting up two subscribers, late letting them wait. So let's go to IntelliJ. Uh, so I've already started the data grid. So the only place that there's going to be data is here. Both client, both the, the publisher and subscriber client are running it with no, no data enabled. So in a co coherence, this hello world subscriber, the entry level to the coherence API is session.create. So you'd want to create this create this session and, and, and hold it around for the pro, for the length of a, a JVM we use it. For this where all the resources that are auto closable and coherence are being used in a try with resource block. So we create this that we won't we remember that when we're exiting it will automatically call close on all these res, these objects that have resources that need to be released. So we create the session. We look up a topic, an example topic. Um, typically, one would configure, have a configuration file to configure this. We're using the default one. I'll show that at the end. Um, and lastly, after you create the topic, you create a subscriber. Notice that I'm not specified, since we're doing defaulting, I'm not specifying, there's a way to specify stronger typing between the configuration file. Here's the configuration file. So 
all topic name stars are, are mapping to topic server. And it's it's a a topic server that's very vanilla configured. Uh, there's no no uh max size set on it or anything. Okay, so in our Hello World subscriber, we're going to put out a prompt saying that we're waiting to receive a value. And then the subscriber.receive is showing the, the subscriber.receive returns a completable future that contains an element wrapper that contains the value that had been sent. So receive the value from the topic. If there's no value available, then the future will We'll, we'll wait in this case until one is available. So that's what we're doing here. If, if you wanted to do, you can also do a time to receive here. Um, put wait time, five seconds. So that would make it so we'd wait five seconds for a value, and then it would do, get a timeout exception. But for our example, we don't want to timeout. So I'm going to start two subscribers. Why those are coming up. Uh, so the next steps in our demo, so we're at the step that we've started these two subscribers. And now we're going to create a publisher. And we're going to send a hello world string to the name topic, example topic. And the two subscribers that were registered will both receive that. So we can see that both subscribers are at the prompt that they're waiting. So they're at this line blocked on the get. And now we'll go look at the publisher. Uh, the publisher looks the try with resource block as the same as the subscriber for the first two for getting the session and getting the topic. And so lastly, we'll be creating a publisher. Look at the documentation for that. So this would create a publisher that can publish values into this name topic. Okay. Uh, this send is a asynchronous send that returns a completable future. Asynchronously publish a specified value to the topic. Cancellation of the return future is best effort and there's no guarantee to stop the publication. So for this example, we're going to do a send. And then since we want to wait for it to complete, we'll do a send. And then we'll do a join on the completable future that was returned. And it will state that it published it. So now let's run this example. And you can see both both Hello World subscribers received the Hello World, and we have a message published to the topic. So we've done a broadcast, a PubSub broadcast. Now we're going to proceed to uh, to show queue processing using the subscriber group. So we will modify the existing a subscriber to be subscriber group members of the subscriber group queue. So let's go back to the source code. So now we go into the create subscriber and we're actually going to do options. I'll show you the options on a subscriber. So here is all the different options 
available on the subscriber are all nicely Java docked. We are going to be doing subscriber.name of to specify the subscriber group. And we're going to call it Q. Okay, and so now we've we've converted the subscriber from being an anonymous subscriber to being a subscriber group member. So we're going to start up two subscriber group members now. Additionally, we're going to go back, since we have two subscriber group members, we actually need to publish two messages. Since for, for, for our subscriber groups, the message only gets delivered to one subscriber. So we're going to change this so one is hello world and the other one is goodbye world. So this is the publisher will sell hello world that'll get put on the subscriber group, the send a goodbye world, and then in parallel it will consume both of them. So we have both our subscribers waiting. So now we have our modified publisher that will send two messages. As you can see, one subscriber received Hello World, the other subscriber received Goodbye World, and this one published example topic. So that concludes our, our demonstration. For more detailed exploration of the topics APIs, there will be screencasts of more in detail topic examples that are included in co coherence examples delivered with coherence 14.1. There is one on subscriber groups and, and how to scale up message processing using subscriber groups. And there's another that details uh, publish, subscribe, and uh, durable subscriptions in more detail. Thanks.